In this video lesson, I would like to go through the slot operation. So as you're looking at this part, I have what's defined as a slot. So I have two equal distant paths that go all the way around. Now this tool works just a little bit different than the pocket or the contour tool does. Um, I might be able to do this with the contour as I pick the inside or outside, but slot does something just a little bit unique that none of the other tools really want to do. So let's go ahead and hop in. Okay, so first of all, where is the slot tool? Well, it's still 2D milling. So one big thing is 2D milling and 3D milling. What is the big difference between them? Well, 2D milling is usually anything that's just kind of a straight extrusion. Anything that just goes straight parallel wall to end the part. 3D milling is when I have strange contours or something that's drafted or at an angle that goes in there or has some kind of arch that go along the Z, which I don't have. So I'm going to open up the 2D milling and you'll see that there are more of them. So the one we're going to focus on right now is slot. And if I hover over it, it says mills a slot by following a slot center line. So that's what's unique. You get to pick an inside path and an outside path and it will split the difference in between them and follow along that. So I'll go ahead and pick slot. I'm going to pick the tool. And for right now, let's go ahead and pick that half inch flat end mill. Um, we'll see if that's going to cause us a problem later. But anyway, so let's go ahead and come to the next tab. So geometry, and the same thing it says pocket selection, and that's not quite true. Um, you can't fit, you can't go ahead and pick flat lands. Like I can't come in here and pick that at all. Just like it said earlier, it needs an inside and an outside contour. So I'm not going to pick the top ones. I'm going to pick the bottom ones because that's going to define my bottom height for me. Uh, and also don't pick one at the top and one at the bottom. So I'm going to pick this bottom one and that bottom one. So that way there's nothing to do on this tab. Um, stock top, model top, whatever we need right now. And then selected contours is all going to work just fine. Um, anything to do here? Well, yes. Uh, multiple depths. It has to do with that specific tool. Unfortunately, this is not adaptive. Because this is not adaptive, then I typically can only do 50% of the tool's diameter as I cut over and I cut down. So my step over is 50% of the tool and my step down is 50% of the tool anytime I'm not doing something adaptive. Um, so let's see, I've got a half an inch tool and I don't know that distance. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK to this. It'll save what I've got. We'll go to inspect and let's see what we've got. A uh, quarter inch. So yeah, I can do that all in one shot. All right, so slot. Um, that's all fine. I don't need multiple depths. I don't want any stock to leave and that's not even on by default. We'll go ahead and come into the linking tab and is there anything I want to do here? This is actually a fairly cool profile ramp. Um, instead of just making a helix like we normally do, it'll actually roll around the part and keep going down at whatever angle it's supposed to until it gets to the level that you've told it it can. Um, so we'll go ahead and change that again. So uh, we'll do the six degree that we've been doing and everything else is fine. Um, so you'll see here in a second that there's some things we need to change. Um, but so far, that's that's it. That's how the slot tool works. Um, you just come in, you pick the tool that you want, you pick the inside and outside, you decide whether you need multiple depths or not, um, and that's really it. Um, and then whether you want a different ramp angle. Uh, so let's go ahead and simulate that. So we'll put in a tool isometric, and we'll hit play. Um, uh, yeah, so that's, so that's not right. Um, that's too wide. That has, that has exposed everything there. So, um, it doesn't actually understand solids like the other ones do. No, not really. It only understands the two paths you chose and it put the TCP or the tool center point dead smack in between those. Um, so that's not good. So how do I know what tool I want here? Well, let's use that inspect tool again. So inspect measure from here to here and it tells me an eighth of an inch so I want an eighth of an inch slot done with an eighth of an inch tool so I'll come into my slot two and this time what tool we want the eighth inch flat so we'll go ahead and pick that instead 
Now that causes me a problem because the eighth of an inch tool, if we go with the rule that it can only step over 50% and step down or a depth of cut of 50%, then I can only go down a sixteenth of an inch. That's true. So I'm going to come to this multiple depths and I'm going to change this to a sixteenth of an inch. If you couldn't think of that, remember it's a calculator. 0.125 is the diameter of the tool divided by 2. That will get me 50%. Um, and that's, that's it. So that will go ahead and give me my 0 0.0625 or a sixteenth. And then same thing. So now it's actually going to go down at 6 degrees until it gets a sixteenth of an inch and then it will finish that level. And then it will go down again at a 6 degree angle until it gets down to a sixteenth and it will keep doing that until it gets to that selected contour. So it'll do all the math and everything for us. The same thing, we go back to setup, we go to simulate, and we hit play. So it'll just walk around the part until it gets to a sixteenth. It'll finish that level. It's gone down again, and it will just keep repeating that process until it gets down to our quarter of an inch. Very cool. So not a whole lot to the slot. Just know that pick the pockets that you want or pick the contours that you want to define the height um, and that's really it so it's two of them and it will split the difference in between them that's it